Welcome to another E3D how to. We are not doing PDMS, we are going to show you how to use group and group sets in E3D. I'm Tiam Singh, so are you ready? Let's get started. Group allows you to actually group different elements together in a different structure. Like for example, you can group them in phases or in different work breakdown structure. In PDMS, when you create group, there's a group form that assists you to create the group world, group set, and assign elements to the group set. I'm just going to go through the steps in PDMS. Once the group sets are created, we can start assigning pipes into our pipe group set. By assigning the pipes to the group set, we can assess the pipes through the group set that we have created in the Explorer. For those who are familiar with PDMS, you might be wondering where this group functionality is in E3D. So let's start the E3D group lesson now. If you look at the sample project in E3D APS, you can see that they make use of the group to actually group all the elements in Area 01, Area 02 and Area 03 together so that the user can access this area quickly. If we want to see Area 01 in the 3D view, we can just drag the group Area 01 into the 3D view. Instead of going into each side to drag the elements, you now only have to drag the group into the 3D view. You can see that in this way, this is very convenient for the users to get everything in Area 1 into the 3D view quickly. To manipulate the group, we use the collection in the search tab. The group words are now found in the shared collection. And you can see there are four group words in my project. When you right click on the shared collection, you can create a new category. Basically, a category is a group word. And you can set the creation word to decide which is the database that you want to put the group work in. Let me select the first database. Let's create a new category or a new group work. Let's rename the new group work that we created. Let's call a new group work demo and as I accept the new name, you can see that the hierarchy in the Explorer is updated. Let's create a new collection. I'm going to rename this collection as Pipe Favorites. So I will put all my favorite pipes or pipe that I'm working on below this collection. Now I double click on the new collection and you can see that this makes this collection the current collection. So I can go to any of the pipes or any of the elements and assign them to this collection. I go to the pipe and use the right click to add to current collection. There are three options to use to add to current collection. Current element, current members and current hierarchy. You can see the elements that I've added will appear below the pipe favorites. And in this list, you can sort, you can add more attributes, etc. So let's add another branch or another pipe to this favorites collection. You can navigate to the pipes below by using navigate to, or you can go to the explorer and open the collection and navigate to the 
types that you want to go to. Let me show you how to remove the pipes from the collection. You just have to select from the collection and remove the selected pipes. You can see the hierarchy in the Explorer updates automatically as well. Next, I'm going to show you the command line where I will show you what is the attributes in the group world and the group set as well as the group item. So let's navigate to the group world and you can see that under the group world, if you queue members, you can see that there is a group set. Going into the group set, you can see that under the group set, there is a group item and not the pipe. And if you queue attributes of the group item, you can see there's an S item which actually relates the pipe to the group item. Just briefly show you how group work, group set, and group item works. Let us show you another way that the group set can be used. And this is used in the area grouping that you comes with the sample project. Let's examine the attributes of this group set using the command window. Let's see if there are any members under the group set by using queue members. You can see there are no members. Instead of using group item to define the members of the group set, they use scope to define the members. And this you can use the expression like all zone with description to actually define the content of the group set. Let us give an example of using this method of creating a group set. So we create our collection as we have done before. For example, this collection is a list of small ball pipes. Pipes of sizes less than a certain value. Let's edit the selection scope. So we use the PML expression that says all branches with an attribute of branch called hball less than the required definition of small ball pipes. And we can test our expression with the evaluate button. And this will bring up all the pipes that is less than 250 mm. Now we have created a selection of small ball pipes. And we can change the column setup to verify that this is the case. We hope this lesson will get you started using groups because it will enhance your design process. And I use them quite frequently for to remind me of the last pipes or last elements that I was editing or in fact I use them to actually separate elements into different phases of the project. See you soon. Bye.